Hi there everyone, it's Mindy here from My Creative Scoop and I'm back with another Copic Marker tutorial for Ellen Hudson. Today I'm going to be using this brand new stamp set called Cooking Lady and I'm going to be sharing with you how to color her using the no line technique. I've stamped her in Memento Desert Sand ink and I've stamped onto my Copic Express It blending card. So I'm going to show you in real time how I colored her using the no line technique and then I'm going to quickly do drop the background and show you how I colored it. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to color is her skin. So for that we're going to be using R32 and R30 for her cheeks and then her actual skin color is going to be E13, E11, E00, and E000. I'm going to start with my R32 so we can go ahead and add some color to her cheeks. So I'm just going to make two little circles right underneath her eyes and then I'm going to go over it with my R30. So I'm going to go over it a couple of times so I get a nice blend on that R32 so that way it, it really blurs out those the, the darker lines of the R32. So now I'm going to take my E13 and I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow underneath her, her where her hair is because her hair is really curly and fluffy so we want it to look like it's coming out over her forehead and onto her face and it's going to create this little shadow. So I'm going to come down the sides of her face just a little bit and a little bit on the insides of her ears. We're also going to make a little bit of a shadow underneath her head so onto her neck and a little bit along the bottom of her collar or the top of her collar and then on the right where her her sleeve ends we want it to look like there's a little bit of a shadow from her clothing and then we're gonna since her hand is flipped upside down we're gonna go ahead and make the shadow go along the back side of her hand now on this side we're gonna again make a, a shadow where the sleeve is and then all on the inside part of her hand, since it's closest to her body and it's kind of tilted inwards, so there's going to be a little bit of a shadow right there. And we're just going to have it round out a little bit into her hand. So now I'm going to take my E11, and I'm just going to come out a little bit more right alongside of that E13. And this time I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of a shadow underneath her mouth. And I'm going to take my marker and just make a little curve going up so that way we can make a little bit of a bridge of a nose. And then right underneath the hand is coming out a little bit more, still leaving room so we can have all those other colors for some light to dark contrast. Oh, and her neck. And then I'm going to take my E00, again come out just a little bit more, I'm going to go over the cheek colors, so that way we get a nice blend, we still see the pink, but it softens it up a little bit and looks a little bit more natural. So for her nose, I'm going to continue coming up just a little bit higher and then start filling in the neck a little bit more. And then fill in the hands just a little bit more. So now we're gonna take the E000. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of her face. I'm gonna make sure I get a nice blend right along the edge of that E00 before I go ahead and fill in the rest of her, her skin. That same thing right here on her little, the little neck that's showing and underneath the strainer and filling in the rest of her hands. So it still looks a little blotchy to me, so I'm going to go back and we're going to repeat that whole lineup. We're going to start back with the E13, adding those shadows back there because sometimes they could get a little dulled out when we go over them so many times with the with the next lighter color, it can get a little faded. So the, adding that second coat really helps put that definition back in there. And then again with my E11.
and again with my E00. And let's take that E triple zero to add that color to the last bit. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna make the apron a white color, so we just wanna give it a little bit of a shadow. So I'm gonna use my C2, C0, and C00. I'm gonna start with my C2. And I'm just going to kind of trace along the, the outline of the stamp so that way I can make it a little bit gray instead of the brown color that we've stamped in. And then I'm going to make a shadow underneath the, where it wraps around. And then I'm going to come down the sides a little bit, again just tracing the outline Same thing over here. And then where it kind of curls in, we're gonna make a little thicker line right there. We're gonna make a little shadow. And then let's go ahead and take that C0. We're gonna pull that color through the C2 to so make this crease a little bit longer. And then finish outlining the outline of the stamp. So it's just a little bit of color. Now we're gonna take that C00, and again, just fade that shadow out a little bit more and drag those lines across for the little crease around where it ties around. And then I'm just gonna do a heavy flick right in these corners to pull in some of that color just to give the, the apron that roundness appearance. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take my E30 and my E four zeros. I'm going to start with my E30 and this little square area that we have, I'm assuming they're like little pockets for at the front of our apron. We're just going to make that like a, a brownish color. So a real cream color. So I'm just going to come along the bottom and we're going to make a little shadow. So if it was a pocket, we'll, we'll make it look like a pocket. It'll look like it has maybe something in it. So it's giving that little bit of a shadow to the bottom. And then we're gonna take the E4 zeros and just give a little flick going all the way up. So that way it looks like it has a little bit of color and it's different from shadowing of the, of the white apron. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my R30 and R32 and we're gonna color the little flowers that are on the front of our apron. I'm gonna start with my R32 and on the inside parts of the flower, I'm just going to kind of give a little trace. So it's just a little bit of color. And then I'm gonna take my R30 and we're gonna go ahead and just fill in the rest of those flower petals. And then I'm going to take my my um, what color? My YG17 and YG13, and we're going to color the leaves. So starting with my YG17, on the bottom part of the leaves, I'm just going to trace coming up the sides and the, that vein down the center on all three of those little leaves. And then we're going to take the YG13 and just fill it in. So it's such a small area, just going over it should blend out that YG17. So now we're going to go ahead and color her shirt, which is also going to be the R32 and R30 to give it a, a pinkish tone. I'm going to start with my R32 
and coming from around from behind the, the collar we're just going to add a little bit of color back there and then also underneath the collar it's going to add a little bit of a shadow and then on the inside parts of her body and the underneath the arm I'm going to add a shadow there and give this little crease a shadow where her arm is bending and all those little creases in her sleeve so same thing on this side we're gonna go right at the where her little cuff is on the sleeve underneath the arm side of the body and I'm gonna give a little flick going away from the collar and wherever my marker stops that's where I'm gonna stop so that way I can fade it out with the R30 then I'm gonna go ahead and come down the side of the shirt to kind of this piece right here this side of the shirt is gonna be overlapping over here so we're gonna add a little bit of a shadow here and also the, there's little creases showing where it's kind of tucked in and it's making the, sh the shirt the fabric gather so I'm just gonna make a little crease going up on both sides have it come in a little bit just to create that whole roundness so now we're gonna take the R30 and I'm just gonna come right along the side. I wanna blend out that R32 just a little bit. We're not gonna color it in just yet since we're just using the two colors. I wanna make sure that all of these white areas that we're gonna leave after we use this R30 all the way, we want to make sure that those areas stay its lightest. So by me adding a, another coat over them right now, they're just gonna be that much darker. So that's why I like to wait when I'm only coloring with two colors. So we're just gonna blend out all of this R32, come up a little bit higher on those little pleats, those where the fabric is gathering. Pull that R32 out so that way we can just make sure that all of this shirt is outlined in this pinky color so it kind of replaces that brownish color that we stamped in okay so that looks good all of those areas we want to stay its lightest so now we're gonna go back and add our 32 back to those same spots where we first added them so we're not adding them any thicker than we did the first time if anything it's just gonna be a little bit thinner or the same so we just want to make sure that it it's more defined And now again, back with that R30. So this time we're gonna go ahead and make sure there's a nice blend right where we left off. So I'm gonna do that all over on this side here. Once it is all nice and blended with that R32 and I have a nice um, gradient going, then I'm just gonna take my R30 and go one swipe over to fill in the rest of the blouse without going over it multiple times. That way this area stays so much lighter and you still get that dark to light contrast. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna give a little flick right along the edge where we've left off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just do one swipe to fill in the rest of the shirt. So same thing here. I'm gonna pull out that R32, make sure I have a nice blend between the two and then just fill it in. So right here is a little different since we want to be able to keep those pleats. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull them up a little higher, trace along the bottom, pull these ones up a little bit higher, and then we'll do one section at a time, just real quick motions. The, the less time you leave your marker on the paper, the less ink that's going to flow out of that nib. So you want to keep it on there as short as time as you can. So we have her shirt completely done. Now we're just gonna go ahead and add a little bit more definition to the button. So I'm just gonna give a little dot.
and then we're gonna go ahead and use our blue we're gonna use some blue colors to make some blue jeans for her so there's since there's not a whole lot of room at all right there we're just gonna be using two colors I'm gonna start with B18 and then we're gonna give some shadows with B99 so I'm gonna take my B18 I'm gonna go down the middle so I remember that that's where it is so we don't lose that line and then I'm going to take my B99 make a little bit darker of a line between the two so that way I can see it and not lose the line of the image and, and then you don't know where to add that line and then I'm going to take the B18 again and just go one swipe over to fill in her jeans. And then you have that nice thick shadow right underneath the apron. And now we are ready to do her hair. So we're gonna make her hair black. I'm gonna be using N7, N5, and N3. I'm gonna start with my N5. And I'm just gonna kind of come right around where the lines are that are already there. So I'm just gonna give them a little trace. And, oh, you know what? Let's take our E11 and fill in the ears. Okay, so now back with my N5. And trace some of the lines that are there. Notice I'm more going up where it's underneath. So I'm sticking to shadowing all of the, the bottom parts. And then let's take the N7 now. And I'm gonna go almost in the same areas, but I wanna darken all of the places that we have here. Sometimes it can be a little intimidating to first start off with such a dark color. That's why I usually start with a middle color. So N5 would be that in this case. And I'm just gonna continue making little flicks and lines so that way we really get that curly texture. Okay, so we have a good amount of color down. Now we're gonna take that N3, and I'm just going to fill in all of the white area. Now I'm just going over it. I'm not trying to blend any of those lines out. We wanna keep that all those lines there to create that curly-like texture. And now we're gonna go back with the N5. And again, I'm just going to add a couple little flicks in between, still keeping all of that N3 nice and light. So we have all of those highlights. So just little tiny flicks just to mimic those curls. A 
little bit more here. And then let's go back one more time with that N7 just to stay closest to her face. So it really looks like all of this hair is coming out from underneath and giving it a nice shadow. We don't really want highlights right directly on the bottom. We want them more along the, along the outside. Let's do a little bit more over here. So I'm just adding little dots in between, so in between those gray areas, so it doesn't look so gray and it just has that little bit of texture. So just little dots or lines here and there. Okay, so now I'm going to take my black micron pen, just fill in her eyes. And then let's go ahead and take our C2 and C0 so we can color the strainer. So I'm going to start with my C2 and go all along this side over here. I'm just going to trace and underneath the little handles and along the, uh, the uh, along across the top. And then I'm going to take my C0. Get a nice blend right along that C2. And once it's nice and blended, then I'll do one swipe over so that way we have that silvery look. Go back with the oh, wrong color. Let's go back with the C2. Just to give it a little bit more shadow. And then let's take the E four zeros again. That's the wrong color. E four zeros, not three zeros. We're gonna fill in the noodles. And then I'm gonna take my E30 and just give it a little bit of a shadow where it's being tucked in inside the strainer. All right, so let's take that R32 and R30 so we can color in her little clip in her hair. I'm gonna start with my R32 and go right along the bottom and then take my R30 and fill in the rest of the clip. And let's define her mouth. I forgot to do that. So let's take the E11 the e and I'm just going to give a little trace and I'll trace underneath her chin again and her little nose just to make it stand out a little bit more. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial on coloring this leading lady, the cooking leading lady, and now you can go ahead and watch me do the background. Mm -hmm.